Hey guys, I'm Aaron, and today we're going to talk about using SketchUp to do math. So those of you know, who know me know how much I enjoy just getting in and doing math calculations and, you know, really, really that tough math. That's a total lie, of course. I do everything I can to figure out a way to model without having to do math. And uh, I wanted to give an example of how that can work, what you can do to shortcut the mathing process using a 3D modeling. And uh, a perfect example came up in calculating heel heights. So the, the distance between the wall and the top of a roof where the roof framing member sits. There's a bunch of numbers that have to be figured out and uh, a lot of people can do this in their head or memorize them, but I figured, well, this is a perfect opportunity to hop in and see how to game the math game using SketchUp. I'm gonna stop talking, we're gonna hop into it. All right, so I have a couple of uh, little just kind of the ends of trusses and a rafter sitting here on top of a wall. Um, the idea here is what we really want to figure out is how far is it from this point right here up to here and how does that change based on things like roof pitch or material size. So uh, I'm going to walk through the process that I went to. I'm going to do it in 2D on the ground just because it's going to be quicker and easier uh, and we'll move some stuff around to figure out what this would be. So I'm going to just hop down here. I'm going to start by drawing a board. I'm just going to draw uh, a two by four board and um, I'm going to issue a trigger warning right now. So I'm going to make this four foot by 3.5 inches. Do not get triggered, but I'm going to do this with some imperial units. So the, the same process goes for metric, but the numbers you use will be different, of course. Um, also, you know, keep in mind, there's lots of different ways to do this and uh, you might have a different way. If so, I would love to hear it. Uh, so let me know. I'm going to go ahead and take this, make it a group. So this is the size of a standard two by four piece of material. Now, what I want to do is I want to create this right here. I want to have it sit up here on the end. This is me, my bottom cord, that piece I just drew, and I'm going to have a top cord on here. So what I need to do is two things. I need to establish this little cut right here. I was always as I design trusses is referred to as a butt cut, the little piece of material, this, this vertical height is about a quarter inch where this comes cutting down. Um, and then the other thing I want to establish is this pitch. And I'm going to say it's a standard 612 pitch. So uh, up six over 12, that's the pitch that this is going to be. So let's go ahead and do that. So I'm going to take this piece right here, this board, this, this is the part now it's going to go real quick. So I'm going to take this board, I'm going to move it up. So I'm going to move this way, hit my modifier key to make a copy. And I want to go up a quarter inch to get that butt cut. So I'm going to type 0.25, enter. All right. So that right now, this second board I created is 0.25 up from the bottom. Now I'm just going to hit rotate. I'm going to click on the end, come over here, and I'm going to rotate that up. I said I'm going to do 6 over 12. I can put that in by typing 6 colon 12. That's going to give me a 6 over 12 roof pitch. There we go. That's 6 over 12. So right now, the dimension from this point, the bottom of my bottom cord, straight up to the top of my top cord, should be four and three sixteenths. And then you can see down there in the lower right corner, it's approximately four and three sixteenths inches. This is actually why I chose this because this is one of the few heel heights I remember from designing trusses is the, uh, the heel height for a six over 12, two by four top cord. That's, yeah, that's that. All right, so just, so, so that it's that really that simple. If I take those two pieces, uh, I can I can do I could do this in 3D. Absolutely, I was just trying to simplify, um, but that that can get calculated that way. So another thing I can do at this point is I can also put my overhang on. So generally speaking, overhangs are measured horizontally from this point right here, from the end, so where the wall is. So what I want to do is I want to come to this point right here and draw a line out the distance that I want this overhang to go. So I'm gonna say I want a 12 inch overhang. I'm just gonna type 12 inches. That is where my overhang should stop. I'm gonna drop a line vertical right there. Now this is cool. Because this top cord ended up in a group, the axes, axes changed uh, to align with that member. So out here in the real world, in the, <laughs> the big world, my, my global 
axes is you know parallel to where this first piece was created but because i made this into a group my axis is this way so this makes it really easy to run this chord out because watch what i can do i grab this piece right here i'm going to grab it by the top and i'm just going to move it right along the red axis until it hits boom on that line that line is 12 inches from my heel so i could do more work now if i wanted you know if i want a different cut on the end here i could go ahead and you know run this out to get a vertical cut on the end um, whatever you needed to do at that point. But if I clean this up and then come in here and maybe we'll just chop this off because it doesn't need to be there. And with that, we actually have everything we need for that heel. Um, I could come in here again, let's, you know, 1.5. And then we'll do the same thing here. Bring that up to here. There we go. Now we have a 3D truss, P, or truss heel that we could put on there. So what happens if something changes? What if, what if uh, you know, this is supposed to be a two by six top chord instead? Well, again, pretty simple because, because I don't have to do any math. I'll just come in here, take the top of this top chord, bring it up two inches, type in two, enter, and there we go. But wait, you say, that makes my overhang wrong. That is correct. But because, again, because we have this set up the way we do, it's as simple as coming down here. I'm just going to, I'm dropping a line down just so you can see where it is. Come over 12 inches, bring that line straight up, and look at this. Now we come in here, take this, move that back along the red axis again. That's 12 inches from the heel. And we have it made just that simply. Pretty cool, pretty cool. Okay, so here's the question. What if I'm not doing a truss? Whoop. All right, so what if I want to do a rafter? So let's say, uh, you know, this is, this is a much, it's a bigger piece of material. So I'm just gonna, you know, bring it out another four inches. So I got some big uh, piece of material and I have in here, uh, let's say a five and a half inch bearing wall, right? So it's sitting like that on top of the bearing wall. How do I take this and calculate, you know, with the bird's mouth cut on here, how's it gonna sit on top of this piece? Well, again, I could do some math or I could just actually draw it. So if I come in here, I figure out, okay, where's my, we'll start at the end. Where's my uh, wall gonna sit underneath this piece? Actually, I'm just gonna kinda pick, yeah, we'll, we'll go in the end. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna come over here and draw a line that is parallel to this piece. Actually, here, let's do this. Let's get rid of that. And I'm gonna come in here, and I'm gonna draw a line over the width of the bearing. So this is 5.5 inches, all right? And then I can take that, and I can move it straight down to where it hits there. That is now my, that's what my bird's mouth, my cut will be out of this rafter. And if I want to now figure out the length of the overhang, again, come over here, 12 inches, and I drop that line straight down and I can come in here now, do two things. I grab this one, pull it again because the axis changed and pull right along there. And then I can trace this here, pull that down. And with that, I've now got a rafter. So this, this height right here is the correct height for this board. And this right here is just ready to be thrown up onto a wall. Thrown up, placed up onto a wall. Don't throw up in SketchUp. Um, so put it like that, okay, 90 degrees. And then I can take that piece right there, place it right on the wall, just like that. So as usual, what I was really trying to convey there was the idea that rather than having to go through and do a bunch of math, you can model things in place and just figure out dimensions. So if you don't actually draw trusses or roof rafters and don't worry about heel heights, hopefully there's still a note in there or two that will help you figure out, uh, you know, how some of those dimensions go together. You're framing walls or uh, putting bolt holes into things. You can spend a lot of time measuring and, and doing math and adding things, or a lot of times you can just start putting things in a 3D model and like in real space, figure that out. Hopefully you liked that video. If so, click like down below. And if you haven't already, please do subscribe. We create several videos each and every week around here and you'll be notified of all of them if you subscribe. Most importantly though, 
please do leave us a comment down below. Uh, do you struggle with math? Do you like doing math in your head and hate this idea? Uh, where do you think this could apply? What process do you have that you think you could apply something like this to? I would love to hear it. We like making these videos a lot, but we like them even more when they're showing something you want to see. Thank you.